Special thanks to these companies for being long-term partners of this channel. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Zach, and here we talk about overlanding, gear, builds, DIY, all sorts of stuff related to modifying your vehicle, getting out there, adventuring in the outdoors. Today, I'm bringing you a video on a sweet dual zone fridge that I have been testing out. I think it's got some nice key features and I wanna show them to you. So uh, if you like what I'm doing with the channel or you've liked some of my past videos, please consider subscribing. Helps me out, helps me be able to continue to make more content like this. I think I've got some pretty sweet stuff coming, so consider subscribing. But let's jump right in and check out this fridge. It's a little on the larger side, so getting it in frame is gonna be a little more challenging, but I wanna talk about some of the key features and some of the things I like about it. All right, so we've got the fridge in frame here at least, but I wanna show you some features. And then we'll zoom back and I'll show some of the other things. But just to start out here, kind of this nice modern panel right here. We've got a little USB plug. So if you wanna pull power through the fridge from wherever you're charging it or running it from, you can use this little USB plug. We've got these up and down temperature controls. And then if you want to actually control this side, then all you do is you click the negative and then click settings and you can change this number as well. I have configured it so that the freezer side is negative four and then the fridge side is 32. From my understanding, you could have them both set up as a fridge if you want. Uh, I don't think both can go to freezer temps, but maybe they can. Let's test it out. All right, I guess they both can go to freezer temps. So you could turn this whole thing into a freezer if you wanted to. And then if you're clicking the settings button, that allows you to toggle between eco mode and max mode, which are uh, battery preservation modes. Um, and then we've got the power button over here. So if we look at this too, from a construction standpoint, the lids are both plastic. And then we have this nice little arm here, which is pretty handy. The arm on both sides has these little pieces that you pull up and then this handle can slide out, which I kind of like. This handle is not particularly too sturdy, but probably the heavier duty you make the handle, the heavier it gets. And so it's kind of nice. Um, one thing that I don't necessarily love is not on this side, but on the other side. It has this plastic handle, which I have confidence in if the fridge is empty, but if the fridge is full, I don't know how strong this plastic handle would be. It's got a, bo a bottle opener here, which is pretty sweet. And then down here, we've got two plugs. We've got a solar plug, and then we've got our charging plug. The power cable is, uh, there's two different ones. There's a, a wall charging or wall power adapter for just plugging into AC. And then we also have one that runs off of DC, which right now I'm running this off of my Blue Eddy EB150, which you can see right back there in frame. So. Yeah, it's pretty slick. So just to give some specs on the fridge, it is a 59 pound fridge. It is 80 quarts and the temperature range can go from negative four all the way up to 68 degrees, which I already kind of showed you that negative four range. And then, uh, so the depth of it is it's 37.5 inches deep. The height is 18 and a half inches and then it's 21 inches wide. I think in the Forerunner, the seat from front to back is roughly 37 inches. So this barely fits. I think if I were to take off the handle up front here, it would fit. So last minute it got pretty late, but I decided to just test this anyways. What I did was is I set the 40% seat up all the way. I didn't recline it at all. It's just in the normal position and put in the fridge. And unfortunately, it's just quite a bit too long. So I'm showing you kind of where the handle is hitting the tailgate that barely can't close. If you took off that longer handle, I think you could easily uh, fit this in there. And yeah, you can still open up stuff and access things uh, with it behind the 40% seat. Now that I've got this hand held, I'll kind of show you what I mean. See how this has got like a little, little trigger to unhook it? That's all I was talking about. Okay, so then we've got all of our controls here. On this side is the much deeper side. Inside we have a basket, which is pretty sweet. And we also have a drain at the bottom, which I really, really like. 
that makes this a lot easier to clean out and then on the back side is a little smaller because this houses the lg compressor i haven't done or like really researched any longevity tests on the lg compressor but they have a warranty and it runs really quiet i will say this compared to my set power fridge this one definitely is quieter and i've been really happy because the quieter the compressor the better it is for leaving in your vehicle while you're sleeping because you got to listen to it at night so again this one also has a little drain which is sweet and a smaller basket so pretty stoked for that right up on top here it says new air We've got a new air right there so yeah overall really like this fridge one other thing i want to show you is uh the lids if you see here they've got these little symmetrical creases so you can actually switch the sides of the lid depending upon which side you want now i showed you in the forerunner that kind of setting it behind the 40 percent seat they're already oriented the correct way or at least the helpful way uh, but you could switch it if you really wanted to, if you wanted to put this on like the side with the inverter or something like that. What I also will say is, is when this is full, it's got wheels on the back and then you've got this handle and this handle is pretty sturdy. So what's really nice is carrying fri a fridge like this actually gets really heavy. It's already 60 pounds. So once it's got a bunch of food in it, it gets pretty heavy. So that may be a reason why they didn't put a super large handle on this side or at least super heavy duty handle because uh, this side is really more for rolling with the wheels i'm not really sure anyway just wanted to show you those quick couple features as well so something i was trying to think through was you know for this price and also like comparing some of the features some of the sizes like how would i go about thinking about buying a dual zone fridge or buying a fridge at all for that matter and I think it kind of comes down to a couple of different aspects. The first thing you got to realize is how much space do you need on the inside of your vehicle and how many people are going to be in your vehicle. If you're going to have two people sleeping in the back of your 4Runner, there's really no way this fridge is going to fit in your vehicle. If you're only going to have one person, I think this fridge will still fit in the back of your vehicle just fine. Uh, if you're going to need a lot of space for food, I think this is a really nice dual zone fridge option because the next size up after this, really isn't getting, gonna fit in your trunk reasonably on the 4Runner. You could always take a fridge and turn it sideways, but taking up that much space in your trunk doesn't seem like the best option to me. Uh, so I feel like this really fits a nice niche where you can kind of put it in the long way rather than turning it sideways and taking up all of your trunk. And so you still got a lot of space on the one side to store other stuff. Nice thing I like about this too is, is anytime you jump from a single zone to a dual zone fridge, what happens is, is your compressor has to get larger and then you also have to add a bunch more uh, equipment and structure to the fridge so that you can divide the two areas. Because typically the two areas are going to be different temperatures, which means you need more insulation. If you're going to have two different regions, then that also means you're going to have to run a compressor probably harder because you're trying to keep one area really cool and one area a little bit warmer but either way you're going to need a larger compressor to run a bigger fridge which means more power consumption so then that means you also need a bigger battery and so one thing i just feel like is if you're going to get a really big dual zone you're going to need a really massive fridge but maybe with a little bit smaller dual zone it's going to be a little bit more efficient i'm trying to remember back when i tested the set power fridge i'll put on the screen the numbers that that fridge was pulling when i was testing it and I feel like this one really was not too bad. Uh, especially if you take your fridge freezer combo, your dual zone, you plug it into your wall in your garage before you go out on your adventure and you get it all set to temp, then this really is already set to a good temperature. What I did is I tested this completely empty. So hopefully that was a good test of just measuring how efficient the fridge can be. But throughout this whole time of testing it, I really never saw it pulling more than 40 watts when it was in eco mode which 40 watts, that's really not a lot of power for a fridge this large. I was pretty impressed by that. And you could probably add like more insulation around this too if you're in a hotter climate to make it more efficient. I know a lot of fridges out there, they you can like buy these insulation bags to put over them. So maybe that would help with this fridge. But 
yeah, I really liked it. I think it strikes a nice balance of size, power consumption, and you know how it fits in the back of the Forerunner. I like that too. So those are some of the things that I wanted to think through when I was wanting to convert to a dual zone fridge because if you're just gonna say, oh, I just want the smallest dual zone. Oh, I just want the most efficient dual zone. You're maybe gonna start sacrificing other things to where I don't know if it's necessarily worth it. Maybe it is for your use case, but I didn't think it was for mine. If I was gonna get a dual zone, I didn't want to get something that was absolutely massive that would take up all my space. And then if I was gonna get a dual zone, I also didn't want a freezer like this big that would maybe hold like a teeny little pint of ice cream or something. So I wanted to have a nice balance of the two. Tiny little workshop update, still a mess. But the good news is, is we've got a bunch of this beginning to be cleaned up so that I can finish working on the tent. tent the Roof rack is all taken apart and now I just need to start putting back together the tent. So we're moving on, we're getting things going here. Just a little bit left to do before I can start working on the tent again. And uh, the plan is to also get some stuff organized so that when I'm filming in here for the tent, it's actually gonna look nice. Also, little side note, New Air sent me this fan right up here. It's got like three different modes and uh super easy i just had a leg bolt laying around put that right into the board and away we go um, this heater right here is broken but plan to replace it and then this should hopefully help to regulate and move the air some this last weekend it was actually quite hot in minnesota despite it really just being fall and uh so i decided to mount that up there because it was getting pretty hot and i was trying to work in the workshop and so yeah pretty slick Thanks for sending that out, New Air. So let's go out in the wild. Let's actually test this thing because I want to see how it does, throw it in the vehicle, and uh, see what we can do to test this out. So let's get into it. Come in here. Ooh. Had to pick up some ice cream bars. Not sponsored by Twix, but man, would I be stoked for that. Test out the freezer. Make sure it's actually working. Those temperature numbers can be good, but sometimes they are not always perfectly accurate. You never know, you gotta do a real world test. So, a little bit of ice cream Twix and coffee in the Forerunner Yeti. For all of you that don't know about this, I did a limited run of Forerunner Yetis. If you uh, feel like you want one, comment down below and maybe I'll do another run. Let's test this out. See if this is pretty good. You can see we don't have melted ice cream here. So that's a good sign. Not too bad. have the freezer set for like zero degrees wasn't quite low enough so last night turned it down to negative four it didn't really take the battery much to actually catch up with that which is pretty awesome and these ice cream bars are a lot more rigid I guess we'll say they're more frozen that's how I like my ice cream anyway so it's pretty sweet that this fridge can keep up with keeping ice cream cold all right, so let's just do a little update on this fridge. So I've been running it for over a day. The fridge section is 36 degrees and the freezer section I've been keeping at the coldest at negative four. The plus and the minus on the left to default is for the temperature control for the fridge. And then all you do is you tap the minus and then you hit the settings button to uh, then switch it over to the the freezer section and then you can adjust that temperature with the plus and the minus. I have been running all of this on my Blue Eddy EB150. It's a little bit bigger and if we can get that in focus, we've still got 60% battery left and it's a pretty efficient fridge so once it's to temp it doesn't really draw any power. What I noticed was occasionally if it really had to catch up it would be drawn about 60 watts and then if you were just kind of tending the like it needed to slowly 
reach a temperature it would pull about 30 watts and I've only been running the DC side so I've got this little micro USB I was charging a couple of batteries and then this was for charging my phone and it's been working really well so the other thing to note is it is at 60% on my little scale there but that could mean it's also 79% like it only goes in 20% increments so I've got a ton of battery life left this is in a perfect situation a 1500 watt hour battery and I've been running the fridge off of it since like I think it was 9 a.m yesterday or 7 a.m yesterday so the other trick that I do is take your fridge and plug it into your wall at your house so then when you have to basically cool these down use your house power to get them all to temperature so then this battery the moment you start your trip is only maintaining temperature and not cooling everything down so add everything to your fridge the night before plug it into the wall cool everything down get all the items in the fridge cold so then when you take this and you put it in your vehicle you don't need to use that battery to cool everything down it's already at temp and that's just to maintain it I also brought my blue eddy solar panels just to see in case that got really low on battery I could set this out on my roof and see how it would charge that battery well, I spent another weekend out in the woods just testing out more gear, and uh, I was able to test out this New Air fridge again this weekend, and I've been running since Friday at about midnight off of that battery, and uh, right now we're sitting at about 60-something percent battery, so uh, again, it's been only drawn about 30 to 50 watts, which is pretty awesome. The temperature on the fridge is 27 degrees and negative six degrees. I have it set at 32 and negative four. So <laughs> it's been keeping temp like crazy. Um, one thing though is, is it's been getting down to almost 32 degrees at night. So it's been really nice. I don't necessarily need to have a super efficient uh, setup right now because the outside temperatures are getting close to basically what a refrigerator would be. But uh, the refrigerator is still you know keeping all the temps I've set and the freezer is so dang cold so that's pretty insane and it's not drawing a lot of power so right now it's like Sunday afternoon night ish and uh, just want to check in with the fridge and give another test out for this um, one thing I will mention is uh, you know I'd come out here and I test this equipment but I also kind of wanted to just show this use case so some people have like full drawer system builds out, build outs for their trunk and so it's a nice place to store the fridge but even with this massive fridge here the Land Cruiser seating arrangement is very similar to a 4Runner. It's not a very big interior and so if you have a Tacoma or a 4Runner and you want to put the fridge in your back seat just like this right now this is just taking up the 60% seat. The 40% seat is still open if someone wanted to sit in there. So it's pretty handy and the cool thing is right out the gate if you put this on the 60 percent side the handle is right here so it's easy to pull it out when you want to move it and up on top here these doors we got they pivot kind of the correct way doesn't necessarily matter but i kind of like that it pivots backward towards the headrest and so uh, i think that there's actually functionality to be able to switch it around so if you did want to do that you totally could but um, this fridge has a lot of nice features and it fits here nicely and we've still got the foot space down there where I've shoved my Blue Eddy but you could really stick any sort of big power supply in there and uh, it would work just great so I've been really happy with this fridge it's I think one of the smaller dual zone fridges that I could find once you start bumping up to the dual zones they just get big so it's hard to really avoid that. I know this fridge may seem kind of massive, but if you want to have a freezer and a fridge, especially for longer trips, there's really no way around it. Well, that's gonna be a wrap for this video. I hope you found all the field testing helpful. I tried to give as much information as I could that would be helpful. Uh, but if you've got any more questions on this fridge, feel free to comment down below. I'm gonna probably test it out a few more times before it starts to snow. So. If you've got questions for me, I'm trying to put it through its paces, so feel free to comment those down below. But that's going to be a wrap for this video. I hope you liked it, and I will catch you all in the next video.